Uh, this is Amos. Yes, that's the Kingfisher's apartment house there. And the other day, the mailman delivered an impressive-looking letter addressed to George Kingfish Stevens, Esquire. And when the Kingfish opened the letter, there was a dividend check from the insurance company. Ain't that a pretty thing? Two hundred and fifty dollars. All right, Georgie, hand it over. Oh, get your claws off of that check. <laughs> it don't say nothing about Mrs. on there, does it? All it say is George Stevens and two hundred and fifty dollars. And I tell you, them two together is a charming couple. George Stevens, you give me that money before you lose it. I'm the one to handle the money. Oh, women ain't got no place in finance. Did you ever hear of Mrs. J. Ping Pong Morgan? Hmm? Uh, Mrs. Uh, Corn Exchange? George, I'm warning you. Put that check in the bank. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, see here, George. I ain't gonna lose my temper and I ain't gonna raise my voice. I'm just gonna warn you, just as nice as I can, that if anything happens to this $250, I ain't never gonna forgive you for it. And I'm telling you now that if I ever hear of you squandering this money on some crazy deal or lose it, I'm going to teach you a lesson that you'll never forget as long as you live. <laughs> that old girl can keep calm louder than any woman ever I've seen in my life. Women. <laughs> Sometime I think I'd be better off if I had gone down the aisle with an alligator. <laughs> Convertible, excellent shape, low mileage, accessories, full price $250. John T. Halpin Motors. You can't go wrong with the weekend special. Got yourself a great little automobile here. Yeah, I'm glad I seen you in, mister. Yes, sir, you certainly came to the right people. The John T. Helper Motor Car Company was here yesterday and will be here tomorrow. You're doing business with an old and reliable company. Got yourself a great little piece of luxury transportation here, my friend. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, and thank you. Yes, sir. Luxury transportation. Well, it ain't too bad a looking car. Nice paint job there, too, Andy. That's what they call the newest champagne finish. That nice bubbly effect. I don't know about this, Kingfish. Listen, Andy. Just look at the lovely features of this car. Hey, Kingfish, what is the turtle back door doing up here behind the front seat? Well, and it's a second-hand car, and I admit it needs a few minor adjustments. Yeah, you got nice luxury accessories here, too. Uh, dashboard, stand wheel, and clutch. Oh, and you're getting a wonderful buy. Yeah. Yes, uh, nice luxury transportation. <laughs> A 
just another minor adjustment, Andy. Now, Andy, since you've seen this beautiful car, I know you're anxious to sign the paper. I won't keep you waiting. Well, I'll tell you, Kingfish, I'd like to take a look at the motor of this car before I sign anything. Oh, Andy, the motor, fine. Now, wait a minute, Andy. <laughs> wow, looks like somebody held a barbecue in there. <laughs> Nothing doing, Kingfish. I ain't buying this mess. Uh, wait a minute, Andy. How about buying half interest in the thing? I'll sell your half interest for 150 bucks. How about it, boy? But it's still a mess, Kingfish. But, Andy, look on the bright side of the thing. You was only buying a half interest. It ain't like if you was buying the complete mess. <laughs> yeah, something to that, all right. Yeah, Andy, we can get a new motor put in for about 90 bucks and a few other little incidentals, and we'll have ourselves a nice little car. You see, Andy? Uh, there it is, Andy. They did a good job on her, too. Not bad, Kingfish, not bad. Well, Andy, the way I figure to work out this joint ownership is for you to use it one week and I'll use it the other. Yeah, we can alter cake. Yeah, and uh, you can have it the first week. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, and Andy, we'll keep the registration in here. Uh, I'll keep my license in there, too, uh, but I don't want to lose it. Ah, that's not a bad idea. I think I'll put mine in there, too. Well, Andy, it's all yours. Andy drove the car all that first week. And the second week, the kingfish took over. Stevens, this is the fourth time you've been in traffic court this week. What do you have to say? Well, you got a nice place here. Stevens, you're a definite menace. Yes, sir. You're not fit to drive a car. Yes, sir. It makes me nervous to be in the same city with you. Yes, sir. And as this is your fourth offense, I'm fining you $50. $50? But, Your Honor... Yes, $50. And if you appear in a traffic court of this city again, there won't be any fine. Oh, thank you, sir. There won't be any fine, but you'll receive an automatic sentence of 30 days in the county jail. Next case. There you is right there, officer. My name is Andrew H. Brown. Yes, honey, and that's the story. George, after you hit that hyphen, how could you uh, give that policeman Andy's name? Mm, I don't know. Just quick thinking, I guess. <laughs> uh, what's 
the matter, honey? George, how do you expect to get away with this? The car is wrecked. Sooner or later, Andy's gonna find out. Oh, I think it's something. Now, if I could just convince Andy that someone else was driving the car when the accident occurred. Somebody else? Yeah, somebody. Uh, let me see. Uh, who would be a good person to make Andy think was driving the car? Uh. <laughs> Why, Andy, of course. George, what is you talking about? Now, if I could just convince Andy that he was driving the car when the accident occurred, he would be responsible. You see, I give Andy's name to the officer. Yeah, the ticket is in Andy's name. George Stevens, of all the crazy things I ever heard, do you think you can get away with convincing Andy that he had an accident that he didn't have? Yes, sir. Don't worry about the old kingfish. There ain't nothing I can't handle. <laughs> Well, uh, come over to pick up the car. Oh, uh, what car was that, Andy? <laughs> well, the car that you and me were sharing together. Oh, that car. Well, I was thinking on dropping by your place later and picking it up. Yeah, I could, uh... <laughs> you was going to pick it up? Well, after all, Andy, your week's up. You don't want to hog the thing, do you? Share and share alike, you know. <laughs> Let's slow down a second here and start over. <laughs> you and me bought a car together. That's right, Andy. And we was gonna share it. That's right. You drive it one week, and I drive it the next. And that's right. Now it comes to who was driving the car. Kingfish, for the past week, you was driving the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I guess it wouldn't help to go through with that again. Uh, something wrong, Andy? I don't know what's wrong, Kingfish. I could have sworn I was walking all week. Right in my feet, baby. <laughs> Kingfish, could I have been driving that car all week long and not know it? Well, Andy, had you ever heard of amnesia? You mean the thing uh, when a fella does something and don't remember what he's doing or nothing? Kingfish, don't tell me I got that. Mm-hmm. But, Kingfish, if I got amnesia all the week, how come I ain't got it now? Well, Andy, I ain't no doctor, so I can't explain it to you in medical terms. But the closest I can put it to you is your brain is a high-tension organism. Put a little too much strain on it, and it'll give way just like the elastic in a pair of shorts. <laughs> oh, exactly. You mean to say that all week long I've been doing things I don't remember, huh? Oh, yeah, but little normal things, though, like uh, walking in the park, shooting pool, and running into fire hydrants, and stuff like that. Mm, yeah. Well, that is something, ain't it? I guess I could have done most anything, couldn't I? And you know, Andy, uh, you riding around in the car all week with your blowed out brain, naturally, you would respond <laughs> for any accidents you might have had. Yeah, I guess I is. Yeah, and so when the police come after you, all you got to do is admit it. Police? Oh, I just uh, speaking hypodermically here. <laughs> something, then maybe again you ain't. I don't know what you done done. Well, having the car all week, naturally, I'm responsible for everything. Yeah, and incidentally, Andy, uh, a few days ago when your mind was out of joints, uh, you bought five bucks for me. I just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> must have been really bad off. Was you, Andy? I got to go to court, Amos. 
The police didn't serve me with this summons this morning. It's for something that happened when my mind wasn't working. Andrew East Brown, reckless driving. It never would have happened if my shorts hadn't popped. <laughs> See, I ran into a fire hydrant over on 138th Street. You ran into a fire hydrant? Yeah, I didn't know about it, but the Kingfish said it happened. I guess I understand. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So the Kingfish explained it to you, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, something wrong, Amos? Listen, Andy. I was over at the garage this morning, and the fellow that drives the tow truck told me that the kingfish ran into a fire hydrant and had to have the car towed back there. Now, that's a coincidence. Me and the kingfish running into a fire hydrant in the same week. Now, how do you like that? And don't you see? Ain't it funny the kingfish didn't tell you he ran into a fire hydrant? Hmm. He got amnesia, too. Oh, listen. Andy, can't you see the whole thing? You didn't hit the fire hydrant, the kingfish hit it. And he's trying to blame you for it. Yeah. Uh, uh, what you gonna do, Andy? Amos, I'm going over to see the kingfish and administer a slight dose of permanent amnesia. Sapphire? Well, what's the matter with you? Andy was just up here. And you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I hope for once in his life he catches you and gives you a good thrashing. Now, wait a minute here. You hope he gives me a good thrashing? Yes, I do. Mm, my own wife, my own family turning against me. This is a fine how do you do. That's just like General Custer's wife doing a war dance. Joyce, man, man, you'll stand up to Andy. If I was you, I'd stand up and take my punishment like a man. If I was you, I'd stand up and face it. That's fine. I'll wait here and you go down and let him be sure. Joyce, see that you ain't hiding in here. Get out and take your punishment. Get out! But Sapphire! Sapphire! <laughs> Uh, that's right, Calhoun. Andy is out looking for the kingfish right now. Do you mean to say that Andy is out to beat up on the kingfish? Yeah, that's why I come over here, Calhoun. Somebody's got to put a stop to this. Two grown men fighting like schoolboys. They won't listen to me. Well, now, wait a minute. There's a couple of pretty big boys, you know. And if you're going to get somebody to come in between Andy and the kingfish when they're fighting, you got to be an awful brave man. It's gonna take a man with a lot of courage, a lot of fortitude, and a lot of willpower. Ain't no telling what could happen to him. Who is the poor boob you got in mind for the job, Amos? I'm gonna take you apart, put you together, and take you apart again. Now, Andy. Now, Andy. Andy, there's someone at the door. I don't care. Ain't nothing gonna stop me from beating you to a pulp. Uh, but, Andy, it ain't polite to keep someone waiting. Well, I don't like to be rude. All right, give me a hand here, boy. <laughs> now, wait a minute, boy. Wait a minute. You keep out of this, Calhoun. I'm gonna beat that coward to a pulp. Now, wait a minute, boys. Amos sent me over here as a peacemaker. 
We don't want no fighting. Don't worry about me, Calhoun. And you ain't beating nobody up, Mr. Big Mouth. You talking awful big since Calhoun got here. A minute ago, you were scared to death. Now, fellas, please. Me? You're scared to death? You were twice the coward I is. Me a coward? I ain't never been a coward in my whole life. You is a coward. I ain't no coward. Well, then, if you ain't no coward, prove it. Prove it? Yeah, go ahead. Hit Calhoun. Me hit Calhoun? Yeah, see, you're the coward. You're afraid of him. Now, fellas. I ain't no coward. Well, then, prove it. Go ahead and hit him. All right, there you is. Calhoun, you want to take that off of him? And? Why? Why did you do a thing like that? Oh, I'm sorry, Cal. Yeah, he a turning chicken already. I ain't turning chicken neither. Well, if you ain't turning chicken, hit him again. There you is. Now, Andy, you cut that out. I'm not to get mad here. I wouldn't take that off of no man. Put up your fist, Cal. Cut it out, Andy. What are you doing hitting me in my face? Holy mackerel. I don't know what I was doing. Calhoun. I wouldn't hit you for all the world. You was my pal. And I wouldn't hit you because you was my pal. My old pal. <laughs> now, now, Calhoun. I wouldn't fight you for all the money there is. And I wouldn't fight you for anything in the world. <laughs> well, if that's the way it is, I'll leave you two cowards here alone and get on out of here. I really love you, Andy. Yeah, and I really love you too, Calhoun. Yes, and uh, what the? I can explain everything. Listen, Kingfish, if you gonna explain, you better explain fast, cause you got a mess of explaining to explain. Now, wait a minute. Andy, you hold him and let me hit him first. Now, just a minute, fella, just a minute. A fine peacemaker you is. Oh, well, he, I don't care what he did. Amos, you got here just in time. I'd have beaten both of them to a pulp. You, 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 now, listen, Kingfish. You is the one that had that accident. And you is the one that give Andy's name to the police. Now, I think it's time you give an explanation. Well, fellas, I'm gonna tell the truth. That's what I'm gonna do. This, I gotta hear. Well, fellas, I got four traffic tickets this week, and the judge said if I got another, he gonna throw me in jail for 30 days. And when I hit that hydrant, I just had to give Andy's name. I didn't mean it, but I done it. I tell you, fellas, I didn't mean no harm. I was just on the spot, that's all. Well. 30 days in jail would be kind of rough, all right. Well, then, why didn't you tell the truth? Yeah, why didn't you tell the truth? Yeah, why didn't you do that? Well, I didn't think Andy would let me use his name. Well, listen, Kingfish. I've been thinking this over from the start. After all, you and me was in this together. And I tell you what. You can go down to the traffic court and use my name. Oh, Andy, you are the greatest fella that ever lived. And that way, I'll be a first offender, and I'll get off with a $2 fine. Oh, you saved my neck, boy. You saved my neck. Oh, it wasn't nothing, Kingfish. The case of Andrew H. Brown, reckless driving. Yes, sir, that's me, Your Honor, that's me. Andrew H. Brown. Let's see. Here are your papers here. Hmm. I see you hit a fire hydrant. Yes, sir. That's me, Andrew H. Brown, the one who hit the fire hydrant. My first offense. I see here, Mr. Brown, that according to your past record, in the past two weeks, you've had seven traffic offenses. <laughs> That'll be either $250 fine or 90 days in jail. Oh. 